Welcome, everybody, and welcome back to Bite Sized Media, a subsidiary of, uh, <laughs> what is it? Off Slate Media. Oh, a subsidiary of Off Slate Media. Uh, sorry, subsidiary. Subsidiary of Off Slate Media. Subsidiary of Off Slate Media. I'm, uh, I'm Jared. We're going to call this our Thursday only era. And because, you are? Oh, I'm Jake. There. But y'all know that because you've been watching right along with us. Or if us. you're new, hi. You Yo. were saying. Anyway, uh,. What was I saying? You We're watching me. Sherlock. Yeah, the contemporary Every one. Yep, know. BBC Sherlock. Yeah, the, the, the Moffat. What is it? What is it? Gaddis. Oh, you bumped. I did. I bumped <laughs> the volume. The the, the uh, Moffat the, Gaddis the, the, the Cumberbun. Show. The Cumber. The Bilbo Cumberbun show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. And this is the end of series one. This is the end of series one. Um. Let's talk about this uh, season finale of Sherlock. I love it. Series finale of Sherlock. Did I say season? Yeah. Dang. Stupid. Filthy British American. People. <laughs> Do you have any British blood in you? Or are you, you I am are a cross one... between a Mordike and a Dykstra. Those are last names. Please don't uh, take us down. <clears throat> yes, please don't so you are be 100% like Xbox Dutch. Live. I am 100%. In fact, Dutch. In fact, I know this is a tangent. However... <laughs> A while ago, I got a hold of the paperwork for my great grandfather's parents crossing with him. Oh, gotcha. In fact, the boat that took them from where they lived in Denmark, I want to say. Why are they in Denmark? They were in Denmark. They what were they doing migrated, there? They immigrated over from. From the Netherlands to Denmark. From the Netherlands. I don't know. That's weird, because Denmark's Danish people. Sorry, maybe it's just the <laughs> Netherlands. I don't know. I looked and at it on the boat was called the Argos. <laughs> anyway, I I found the boat manifest that got them on their trip over the um, Atlantic. And then uh, was reading about that boat, and it brought a lot of the uh, Dutch immigrants back over during World War II, so there's a high likelihood that the ship that brought my great-grandfather over brought my grandfather back to World War II. Interesting. That whole tangent was just for me to say, a little bit of of me is British. <laughs> Tiny bit. So, that's <laughs> all. It was going to be five seconds and it turned into a family uh, uh, history and lineage <laughs> thing. That's okay. We all need a break from Sherlock sometimes. <laughs> Not Watson though. He he doesn't get a break. He gets a nice and a nice he, uh, he, third he, wheel following him, telling him what's happening. <laughs> but that was last week. This week is the great game. And as you said last week, this is like one of the most fun hour hour and a half of TV you would ever see. And back yeah. in 2010, when you watched it on Groupthink or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or now he's gonna say, it's. News group. There and you, you go. You don't watch it on it. You, yeah, you torrent you it. And I, no, you don't torrent. You it's said not you torrent what it is. It. I said it's legal, like legal torrent. That's not what it is. Gotcha. The, so, regardless, yeah. Um, this is the episode that I remember the most of the two seasons of the show that I've watched. It's got, series. Sorry, series. Um. Yeah, I'm just excited to get into it. Gotcha. Without any spoilers, do you remember anything, or is that spoiler territory? You really can't talk about this episode without talking about spoiler territory, and I want you to experience it fresh. Gotcha. And you only, again, you only saw the first two series. Correct. Well, I think I probably saw the first episode of the third series. Which would be The Empty Hearse. Yes. According to what I wrote down. Hopefully I'm right. So you saw, the last thing you saw was the, the Orville Rickenbacker thing. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. End of series one. Already? Yeah. Man, it felt like it took us like 20 weeks to get to Avatar end of series. Yeah. That's 20, like two episodes or whatever. So. <laughs> yeah, it is. Technically, that fits more into what we 20. always discuss bite-sized being, not an hour-and-a-half show. 
Yeah, we broke our rules a little bit. Bye bye, everybody. That's behind the curtain. Yeah. You don't need to see the man behind the curtain. Let's take a bite. <laughs> Welcome back. We just watched the uh, fantastic uh, series finale of uh, the series first one finale. Yes, yeah, series say. one finale of Sherlock. It's honestly one of my favorite episodes of the, I guess, six that I've seen or seven that I've seen. Um, six, seven. Oh, you said you watched the first. I watched the. I, I know what happens with the empty hearse. Um, yeah. So, what'd you think of it, Jared? Oh, it's fun takes you a bit to get it and then of course you're starting to think like okay the two separate plots have to intersect because that's just how plot and tv plots work but it does a nice subversive thing of of course spoilers just he the one completely stops to solve the 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 b plot with the missile thing and then when sherlock points out you it's like you as the audience like oh, of course the distraction really was it really was a distraction to get this but then it's revealed oh he doesn't care about that mm-hmm. he's just toying with him which i don't know a ton about the source material but that's exactly what moriarty does from everything i've heard and read like mm-hmm. it's a game to him and it is a game to sherlock to an extent in this and other but that's why the the human connection we talked about last week is still there because I think he says he says in the, in the ending scene like, "Bow, I'm gonna take out your heart and burn it." He's like, "I've been told I have no heart," but then he says something. I can't remember what he already says, but it basically says like, "There is still a bit of empathy in him." He's well, not I mean, completely. Look at the way he took the bomb off of John. He cares. Yeah, he still does. In and his yeah. way, but. Yeah. And yeah. like we said last week, there are a couple instances of that that we saw that he can c- try to connect. But then here, that was like genuine, where he genuinely cares about his friend. And, and, and you know, you also get those really human moments. Like last week, it was the uh, the smile smile with the the nine million dollar pen or hair clip or whatever it was. This week, it was <laughs> after he figures out the painting is a fake. Um, <laughs> it's just like no one would have ever seen that, and he goes, mm. "I see." Mm. Well, almost nobody. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I I, I just, was thinking about with that painting, that Vermeer, it's like that's a really cool way to like solve that and hide that. But then I thought, like, as much as painters, I don't know painters real, as much as they do like a landscape like that, they would be painting what they see. It's like. Would the stars be that accurate? I'm asking if anyone's like a art or Vermeer I mean, expert. I mean, it's if it's weird. like an, I don't know, I don't know if that's a one, if that's a real painter, but also I think Vermeer is. Two, I don't know, but two, if like, if it was also like an astronomer painter sort of thing, it, it probably would be at least somewhat accurate. Yeah, it was a painter. Yeah, it's probably we could look into that. So there probably is something underneath where it is like he is paying attention to that detail. I think it's a cool thing. It's just us sitting there like not knowing the painter. I wonder if painters would pay that much attention to the stars. Usually stars, you just just dot them all. Yeah. But flick. <laughs> of course, he does his usual like he solves it early but takes his time. And you're like, Sherlock, come on. <laughs> that was a really intense scene, especially because it's a kid on the yep. other line. Uh, I, I, like I said, this is one of the most fun hour and a half TV shows I've ever. It, I had to put it like it combines everything that is good about the show, like the strengths of uh, Martin Freeman and uh, Benedict Cumberbund, yeah, um, and then everything that you loved. <laughs> about the the study in pink and then just kind of puts it full force and like i don't know there's just something fun about it even though there is genuine peril and then it's obviously all capped off with the uh with andrew scott's 
just wonderful performance of that one scene is just like oh man the delivery the flair the 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 screen charisma like and he's not that old either no that's the other thing like you know usually like Moriarty and Holmes are older gentlemen and here we have Cumberbatch has got to be in his 30s early 30s Mm -hmm. I'd guess he's born in the mid 70s and then Andrew Scott, I think, is like early to mid eighties, around probably around yeah. your, your age. So he's probably in his like mid to late twenties, so somewhere in there. But here he is walking around, just just you know the weird inflections and the high pitched. I'll catch you later. You no, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It was great. And uh, was sort it sort of like lisp thing that he had? Yeah. The we didn't mention it in the opening. Uh, the opening we filmed, of course, an hour and a half ago, so I'm trying to remember what we even said. But I think I said when the the scene that introduced him, the only scene he has before, you, you get to the swimming pool scene again, is only the second time we see him. Because the first time is in the hospital. And I, I, I think I turned to you during watching, I'm like, oh yeah, you told me he was Moriarty a couple weeks ago when we weren't like specifically discussing spoilers. You just mentioned that just in like uh, casual conversation. But like my uh, steel trap mind for thing random things, when it's spoilers for TV or movies or whatnot, they stick. They just stay. And I remembered that. And you, of course, tried to play coy like anyone would. Like I was like, I don't know. I didn't say that. But it's like <laughs> no, it's like, I actually don't remember saying that at all. Actually, yeah, it was like two, three weeks ago. You mentioned it, it to me. We must have been talking about something else that he's been in or. Something, something, but I remembered that that one little thing, and then, I mean, looking at him, I was like, yeah, introducing this character just, just out of the blue like that. Yeah, <laughs> he's Molly's random boyfriend that's in one scene that gives Sherlock his number. Yep, and then I thought, and um, then I looked at the back <laughs> of the case, and there he is in a picture. It doesn't tell us who it is. But I go, oh yeah, he's Moriarty. Yeah, he he is. And you had asked me like, did that ruin? any of it for you and no it works even if you know the twist <laughs> it's so the, of all the fictional characters in iterations of fictional characters I've come into contact with since this that, that scene is just stuck in my head the swimming pool yes thing. I think I watched this episode like twice in a row just because it was like this is how you write <laughs> It's real good and now I yeah. am of course a different person than I was, but well, was I, I still think time ago. I still think it's really good. Oh, it is the performance, the way you know the suspense of it because it's like <coughs> it's like it keeps tra- like trading who has the upper hand because you have you have uh, Watson there with the bomb strapped to him, mm-hmm. and then Sherlock has the gun, but then it's, so it's like Watson like when he wraps around where it says run, but then the the laser pointer of the the rifleman sniper is on Sherlock, so that makes Watson back like it's all this stuff. Well, and then um, I had forgot that Moriarty Moriarty comes back and the end yeah, after they take kinda, the bomb it's, off. It's like, like a fool's fool's ending where you're like, okay, well we got out of that. The game's not like the game for now is over, but it's going to continue. He's he's keeping him alive because it's fun. And then he just pops back in, and there's more. Snipers. I'm so changeable. <laughs> but then Sherlock's the last thing you see before it cuts off is pointing at his gun at the the coat with the bombs now on the floor between them. And I go, wow, what a cliffhanger! And you know, 2012 is when the next episode is, so you get a nice two year gap. Yeah, that was really annoying. Um. Oh, not for me. We get to watch it next week. <laughs> It was genuinely annoying for me living that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to take note of is it's so fun watching things with subtitles, and you actually turned me on to that because one, they spoil things sometimes. Yeah. But also two, in like a regional sort of thing like this, like these are I I do not I think we've talked about this before. Blu-rays are not region free, correct? Some are made region free, but there are. Th- Three regions, ABC. Okay. Actually, so, hand, hand me that. Or hand me the case. Hand me the, the Series 1 case. Let me see. Uh, if it's on here, it might be. Yeah, it might actually be on the box. I think it's on the box. 
So hand me the box. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know where to look. Yeah, hand it here. <laughs> I'm not an expert or anything, but I know what it looks like. If it, if it's on here. I know what the DVD regions look like, but I'm just that old. so. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. It's the... It's kind like the a, little like hexagons with ABC in yeah. it. If you see, if you see all three stacked on each other, that's region free. I'm not seeing it at all. <laughs> do do so, I have some sort of pirated copy of it? No, well, this this wouldn't be pirated. I just again, if there, it's not on there, it might just be region free overall. I wonder if it's on a disc, maybe. But regardless, I don't even see it on a disc. Like so, it was really funny. Like with the with the um the regional sort of things, <laughs> the way that they spell things. Yep. Uh, we were talking about like checking or all the different U's Tire. that. The meow. <laughs> yeah. So I looked that up on Google. and it's M-I-A-O-W? Yeah. Um, and at least American Google, I can't say if it's different in other countries. <laughs> it's the plural noun of it. I didn't know that. I, it's also the third person present. So if the cat is, what was this third person present? Like if the cat is referring, if the caption is referring to the cat itself meowing, I guess. I think so. First person is when the narrator is like you, you're talking about First yourself. person is I. I. Second person is the yeah. least common, right? Because third is separate. Second is someone talking about someone else. Yep. The main character is not the narrator, but the narrator is in the in the world and then third is it's a they're disconnected they're detached it's an entity mm -hmm. so it's the third person present of a cat meowing that's what google says interesting <laughs> it's i just yeah i just really love this um do you want me to spoil it for you not no. really not really spoil it for you i guess i just do you want me to tell you um how much more Moriarty is in the series? No. Okay. I'd rather be surprised. Okay. I, I'll say one thing that I liked that I've noticed that is different <coughs> in other shows is like, as I said, Moriarty's in two scenes, swimming pool and that one of the early scenes in the hospital, the introduction scene, and then we don't see him for over an hour. And now what we I, don't see him for over two years. What I appreciate is, if you don't know the twist, it's completely out of your mind because we only saw him once, and it wasn't super obvious that he. Would I mean, be you kind of called it, but again, but I, I told knew you. I had some other context other than you telling me, like he's on the box is another thing. Like if he's there, it's like yeah. But I feel like American shows or like procedural stuff, you would consistently see him throughout the episode. Mm. Maybe not too much in most things, but. He'd at least have like two or three more scenes because it's in our stupid America minds. It's well, we got to remind you that this character is here now. Yeah, and then that's why so much of the the twist stuff. It's like, well, I can call that because you keep shoving it in our face, or it's here. It's one scene, and they use it as a joke of sorts because Poor he goes, Molly. "I know," and he's like, "He's not gay. <laughs> he's not gay." My so, sweetie, there's a gay. lot of gay <laughs> jokes in this series. Yeah, I but mean, it's, it's not like it's 2010s it's British, not, so it's like it's going. But it's not like up. like it's not the worst thing in the world, at least from our perspective. It's it's mostly um, Watson being uncomfortable with it. Yeah, or it's like even if he's not uncomfortable with it, he's uncomfortable with the thought of him being lumped in like that mm -hmm. with him. So it's like it is a, it's a insecurity of sorts. But even then, it's like they keep bringing it up. But then he does call him his little pet. So and then I thought about that. I go. Yeah, Watson doesn't do a ton, at least in this first series. Because I remember, like, when they bend down to look at the body by the Thames, and he's actually doing some, like, medical stuff, I go, yeah, he's not really done much as a doctor in this. Like, Yeah, but does he ever really, like, even I in the feel context like, of Sherlock? I feel like at, I've seen more, like, I think the first Guy Ritchie movie, he actually contributes quite a lot. He's one of the plot points of that. Because he's the one who inspects the guy after he's hanged. Hmm. It's like his reputation as a doctor's online. Like, that's like an integral part of that story. Whereas here it was like, 
in the first episode when when they go up to the apartment, the pink lady, he does a little bit, but he doesn't really help him because Sherlock I mean, he, knew everything. And he, and he does. Yeah, I was going to say he does shoot the dude at the end of the. I'm saying doctor wise. Okay. As a doctor, because it's like that's a big part of his character because he's Doctor John Watson. Yeah, I, I also and think the second that, one he didn't. I really also didn't. think that this was this season, this series, was primarily about establishing the type of Sherlock this is going to be, yeah. which you can still develop Watson. Which again, the first yeah. episode has all his backstory stuff because you're setting up the character. Yeah, but he doesn't do anything medical in the second one outside of working as a doctor. And we don't see him do anything because he, you know, it's the one scene where he's asleep, and then Sarah does like five of his patients, which we and hardly then he, ever see her ever again. Well, we saw her at the beginning of this episode, and, it was a, and it's like we see her, and he even mentions to Sherlock later that he's unemployed. So it's like, wow, he didn't keep that job long. Mm, 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 mm. So it's like he's not. And then other and think of the Thames, he like looks at him and says a few things, but they're not really details that are important to Sherlock because he's looking at other things. And it's like, yeah, he's kind of just here to buy his groceries and be like his bouncing board for talking to someone. Because what he's saying in the first steps would like, like, if you'd like to come, otherwise I'm just talking to myself out loud. Yep. And he is kind of that person that's like, there's a reason why he has to explain everything out loud. It's like he already does this, but Watson is like that audience vehicle. And and I and I was thinking like, yeah, he's he's not done a ton, and that's okay, but it would be nice to see him do more he gets developed yeah and that's why it's like that's series one we got three more so mm-hmm. it's like there, there's more time but as, as as far as a first series go like very good yeah i mean it's very it's how do we put it it's very good it's not that much as far as character development goes because you, you it's only got three episodes three episodes like yeah four hours or so four and a half yeah yeah so i mean I'm excited to keep watching. I mean, I know kind of what happens. I remember. Obviously, it's still been 12 years since I've seen the second series. Yeah. And at a certain point, it will be stuff you've never seen. Yeah. And we'll be on the same page. Yeah. So. <coughs> yeah, very good. Very excited. Excited to see, hopefully see more of Andrew. Andrew Scott. And just everyone. It's it's a good duo. It's a good chemistry. Very well cast. That you get used to that early 2010 style and editing, and there's a lot less of it than that first episode we were talking about during. And I was like, but you, I wouldn't the, even like that. That stuff with the painting was the closest I would say would come to that. That was what I was going to ask you. What did you think about the? Um, so there's like, there's like six ticking time bombs in this episode. There's the overarching one of the pips, and then there's each of the individual ones. Yeah. Was that annoying you have when they cut back to them to kind of remind you that that was happening? Not too bad. I appreciated it because I feel like there's so much dialogue going on that I would forget that that's what we're driving towards. In fact, I forgot about the pips until after the third countdown and it came back and they mentioned it again. I was like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. That's what happens when you have an hour and a half long episode. Like it just so much happens. Yeah. But yes, I, I, I am excited to keep going. All right. Well, uh, carry us out with our socials. All righty. If you'd like some more off slate media content, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and the funny TikTok, and uh, <coughs> follow us on X, formerly Twitter, and you can. Uh, listen to us on Apple, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher. Or, sorry, not Stitcher. I messed up. iHeartRadio, Stitcher's gone. <laughs> and uh, check out our YouTube, like, subscribe, comment, ring our bell, and check out our cool, groovy website. We're going to be we uploading kinda... on Thursday still for more Sherlock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next, you know what the next episode is, Jake? Um, I did for a hot second, and then I forgot. <laughs> I have it pulled up right here if you want me to say it. Go ahead. It's the first episode of Series 2, uh, A Scandal in Belgravia, Belgravia, however you say that. Mm. I believe that's next. That's what I wrote. Just to double check, I will hit the next button on IMDb here if it didn't kick me out of that. There we go. Yep. And that debuted May 6th, 2012. So I couldn't imagine waiting for this. Luckily, I don't have to wait for it. 
it's funny because like this is around the time that they both kind of exploded as actors. Well, yeah, because of the Hobbit for Martin Freeman and Cumberbatch, this is like the breakup. This is probably the breakup of both of them. Yeah, I'd say that. But like, as they got more popular, like I know it's like two or three years in between each, but it's still like <laughs> it's so long to end stuff on a cliffhanger like that. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, anyway, but, but that's for the future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, it, so I don't. You don't know. How to I, do? I, I, no, I know how to do it. I wanted to say something clever because I miss Dicky and. I miss Dickie's energy, but I am just apparently not as clever as Dickie. If you want to keep solving mysteries with us on Thursday, there you go. That that sounds like Dickie. Why don't you take a bite?